Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you have had a great start to your week. Welcome to this IELTS class everybody where we are starting this week's live sessions with IELTS speaking part one talking about games kind of a fun way to start and some great vocabulary and strategies coming right up for you for the uh, IELTS speaking section. Welcome Fuang, welcome Dewey, Lima, Raquea. Nice to see many of our members. Welcome Sarah, our chat moderator. Nice to have you with us here today. And welcome students, Nipa, Shah, Dylan, Akriti. Good to have all of you with me. Everybody who's watching, uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that power these live classes. And if you watch these classes regularly uh, and you're learning for the IELTS, definitely visit us there and join our premium IELTS packages. Uh, we use the materials from the websites, the practice exams, uh, the audio materials for these live classes. They're basically the textbooks. So click that big red button that's just above my head there to join the premium version and learn effectively. We're an IDP affiliate, we're a British Council partner, and an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent, so if you have questions about IELTS, school applications, you can always ask me. Uh, this is general IELTS here, gieltshelp.com. Again, click that big red button. That's just right above my head there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. And when you click that button, you can use the discount code READ9. That's because we just released a new reading video. Uh, that discount code will get you a 10% discount when you uh, check out. So uh, use that code READ9. Uh, yeah, and we'll use this website in a little bit to interact with students. Uh, so students who know how to use the website, log in because we will be using the website for speaking practice shortly. Uh, students, uh, we have apps for you. The apps are Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help in your app stores. You can download those and link them to your web accounts. You can also follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE Help, G IELTS Help. Uh, that's where we post uh, some fun reels with vocabulary and tips. And um, if you have questions, you can send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Aliaskar is asking uh, in the pen and paper based IELTS exam, should I write all my answers in capital letters? Um, in the listening section, when you're listening and answering Aliaskar, write with small letters. It's faster, the spelling is more accurate. And then when you transfer your answers to the answer sheet in the 10 minutes, then you can check your spelling, check your answers, and change your answer from small letters to big letters, to capital letters, okay? In the reading, you can answer capital letters. Yeah, that way you can avoid mistakes with capitals for sure but only in the listening and reading. In the writing section, you have to use correct capitalization. So at the end of the day, Eliaskar, it is a good idea to learn correct capitalization. Yeah. So as you can see, everyone, I am looking at the chat also. So let me know if you have questions. Um, students, Amazon has our exam books, two for academic, two for general. Uh, AE helps um, academic IELTS and GE helps general IELTS. As long as you search for those titles, you will find those exams, okay? All right, oh, and by the way, students, Sarah can also help you with uh, a lot of questions. So I can see Sarah's answering somebody's question right now about the website that we're using. Um, so, <clears throat> or giving notifications, so you can ask her questions as well. She is here to help. Thank you for that, Sarah. Um, all right, uh, students, uh, March 9th to the 16th. So 
we've got uh, speaking part one right now, talking about games. Um, then tomorrow we have reading. And again, check out that reading video. I'll copy that link in a second. We've got listening parts three and four. We started uh, an exam last week with part one and two. So if you missed that, check that video in the live classes for uh, last week. And then um, we've got speaking part two and speaking part three on Saturday. And then uh, Sunday, Monday, there's no class, okay? Um, and then on Tuesday, we're going to have class so on the 14th. We have a little bit of a different week uh, coming up after because I'm going to be away on the 17th, 18th, 19th. So uh, we've got classes on the 14th and the 15th. Pay attention to that. And then we have a special class on the 16th where we're going to have a guest, a former IELTS examiner, join us on Thursday. Um, and that class will uh, start um, a little bit earlier than this one. And it'll be a two hour class with, with speaking part two and part three. So um, that's going to be pretty interesting for everybody. Uh, and you can ask questions from an IELTS examiner. Uh, who did a lot of IELTS exams for many, many years. Okay. All right, so that'll be on the 16th. Uh, Philo thinks that's a great idea. All right, um, so uh, we've got a new reading video for you. Okay, check that out when you have a chance. It's basically teaching you about the limitations of skimming and scanning and teaching you some better strategies for the reading section. Um, so that's the video there. I just put the link into the chat. So for good reading strategies, check that out. Okay, a lot of people think skimming and scanning are great for reading. Um, they're not as great as you might think. So definitely learn some other strategies for IELTS reading, especially for the uh, academic version of the test. All right, students, um, IELTS speaking part one. Let's jump into it. So what is my number one tip for everybody for the IELTS speaking that can easily save you or get you a band score? What do you think? Anybody know what I'm about to say here? So just a reminder, remember the very important tip always yeah Alexis says practice before the exam exactly I mean that's a that's a simple and elegant way to put it Alexi um, so make sure to show up to your exam center one hour before and practice uh, questions with other candidates if you can't, then practice with a tutor or practice with another person, with a friend that can help you, but definitely switch your brain into English, okay? This can easily save you a half a band to one band score, and I bet there's still a lot of people that just don't bother doing this, and it's not a good idea. I mean, if you're spending $300 US on a test, you might as well, right? Especially since the speaking is so important. Um, especially for those of you who are master's students and you need supervisors, okay? That means a professor who is going to be your supervisor, kind of your mentor um, during the uh, master's studies. Uh, they really want to see high scores in speaking in your IELTS exam. And oftentimes those master's PhD supervisors, they ask the registration department, like, you know, like, what was, was the score for the student for speaking? Okay, all right. So make sure to show up an hour early, get the best score possible. Okay, um, so you go to your exam, be confident, you deserve to be there, you've studied, you've learned a lot of English, you've practiced lots, so be confident. Um, you paid good money for the test. And, um, and then uh, you register for your test 20 minutes before your interview. Um, you will go to a room, they will take your picture, 
They will ask that you leave any item other than your pen or pencil and your water bottle. You can have an eraser. Uh, you cannot have any writing on your water bottle or on your pencil or on your eraser, so it has to be blank, basically. Uh, and then you go into your exam and uh, make sure to go to the washroom, make sure to hydrate so you know your mouth isn't dry. Uh, take a few deep breaths, you'll be fine. Um, just remember the examiner sees a lot of candidates that day, so you want to be loud, do your best, be confident, okay? All right, um, a good way to think about the examiner is think about your examiner like your grandparent, okay? So they love you, they judge you, no, <laughs> grandparents don't judge you. Um, they love you, um, they don't know what you know, and you have to speak loud, or loudly I should say, so that they uh, can hear you, okay? Super important, speak loud. Uh, by speaking loudly, it also helps your confidence, okay? So a la nice loud voice is very, very important, okay? So speak loudly during your IELTS. Uh, plus it makes life easier for the examiner. Um, examiners are not ESL teachers, okay? This is a very important uh, tip. Uh, some of them might have been in the past, but not for sure, okay? So IELTS examiners are not ESL teachers or even teachers for that matter, okay? They're examiners. Okay. Why do I say that? Okay. Why do you think I say that? I, I'd like you to give me some thoughts on this um, because I want you to focus in and I want you to really think about this and put you in the right frame of mind. Okay. Get the right frame of mind. I'll put you in the right frame of mind. So why do I say IELTS examiners are not ESL teachers? A lot of students who go to the IELTS, they have had many ESL teachers, so they kind of think about English as like, oh, it's an ESL teacher, especially when they hear a native speaker, like an examiner, like, oh, it's just another ESL teacher. Um, but it's um, it's not an ESL teacher. Sakharain says examiners can judge. Sakharain says examiners are there to test, not to, uh, to teach. Uh, Alexi says you have to speak naturally. Yeah, um, or put it another way, they will speak naturally. So they're not going to adjust their language, okay? Um, in the IELTS exam, you will not hear the examiners say, Hi, good morning, how are you today? They're, they're not going to speak like that, okay? They're going to speak very, very naturally to you, just like I'm doing in this class, all right? So that's one reason, absolutely. Um, what's another reason I'm telling you that, that they're not uh, ESL teachers? Okay, what else? And there's another reason. Uh, they will not explain words or paraphrase sentences. Okay. That's another reason, right? So if you say, oh, can you explain that? I'm not sure what that means. They'll just go to the next question, okay? They're actually not allowed to. So they're not allowed to explain or paraphrase. Uh, ESL teachers often do that. IELTS examiners cannot do that. They're not allowed to do that and they won't do that. So they're not going to paraphrase. Um, I have heard students say, oh, can you ask me that question in another way? The examiner can't even say, no, I'm sorry, I can't because my instructions are that I cannot ask you questions in different ways. I can only ask you the question in one way, the way that it's written on my question form, but that's actually their instructions. You, you may only ask the candidates questions the way it is on your sheet and when they're recording your session it's also recording them so they have a supervisor if the supervisor hears them paraphrasing they will be forced to do more training or they will lose their job okay 
So, uh, yeah, they can repeat questions. Shakh Zaib says, well, can they repeat questions? They may repeat questions, but it's up to them. But it's their choice. Okay, so they can choose not to. You can say, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Um, if they think you're asking for the repeat because you have no idea what they're saying, they might not repeat. Okay, so it's their choice uh, to repeat the question uh, or not. They also test native English speakers. Okay, IELTS is a test of English proficiency. It's used for native speakers as well as non-native uh, speakers. So uh, make sure that you uh, recognize that. Um, what's another uh, reason that I'm telling you this? I, I haven't seen the most important reason that I just told you that the IELTS examiners are not ESL teachers. ESL means English as a second language as uh, Sarah put into the chat there. Okay, there's one more reason. It's the most important reason, All right? Yeah, Fuang, they can lose their job if they don't do their job correctly. They can lose their job if uh, if they do it wrong. It's, it causes a big problem for the candidates and for the test center. So, okay. So D&D Creators says, you already taught this to us maybe a long time ago, D&D Creators. So there's a one more reason why I told you that uh, the uh, IELTS examiners are not ESL teachers and it's the most important reason and I haven't seen it so D&D if you remember that lesson from before what's the reason okay that I'm telling you the IELTS examiners are not ESL teachers um, the reason why hopefully some of you will think about this and you have to think about this um, Alexi says they're testing you, not teaching you. Um, no, the most important reason is they are not there to try to get you to speak English. Okay, so that's a big one, all right? Because students often think that, oh, here's this little bit older gentleman or um, woman, lady, and they're a native English speaker, so they're going to try to get me to speak English. They're going to ask me some questions to try to get me to speak English. Like, um, they'll say, for example, what is your hobby? And then you say something like, I like reading. And then they'll say something like, oh, really? Uh, can you tell me a little bit about it? Why do you like reading? Well, because it's relaxing. Oh, that's great. Um, can you maybe uh, tell me a little bit about the book that you're reading? Yeah, sure. I'm reading um, Lord of the Rings. It's a fantasy book. Okay, that's not the IELTS exam. The IELTS examiner doesn't care if you give a two-word answer. They just give you a low mark for fluency. Okay, so they're not trying to there to get you to speak English. They're just there to test you. So it's your job to speak English and show your best English, okay? All right, does that make sense? Okay, and it's it sounds like, oh yeah, no, that won't happen, I get that, right? Like, I'll go to the aisles, that won't happen to me. Um, but it's surprising how many students that happens to because so many people, of course, have had so many ESL teachers that they just got used to that friendly ESL teacher taking center stage and asking follow-up questions and trying to pull English and pull sentences. But uh, no, IELTS, it's your job. Okay. All right. So, um, here we go, everybody. Let's get into it. Uh, so, first question. Okay, you go into your exam. The examiner says, Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. The test has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. For part one, I will ask you some questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. First question they always ask you is, May I see your identification? 
So give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Um, a good one would be like, gladly, here is my passport that I used to register for this test. Please have a look. Okay. So again, show fluency right away. Show the IELTS examiner that you understand that they're not an ESL teacher. You're there to have a professional conversation. Repeat after me. Students, this is speaking, so make sure to uh, speak <clears throat> and repeat. Okay, so speak and repeat. May I see your identification? Gladly. Here's my passport that I used to register for this test. Please have a look. Okay, if you say sure and then show your ID, First of all, it's not professional. We don't go sure like that to an official or an examiner. It's not natural English in the situation. Uh, secondly, the examiner is going to be like, oh boy, this person thinks they just showed up for a 30 minute or a 20 minute ESL class. Um, all right, so don't do that. Okay, don't say sure. So have a full sentence. Okay. RT says, Certainly, here's my passport that I had used for registration a month ago. Please take a look. Artie, nice, good start. You get my first thumbs up of the week, all right? Um, good, it's another way, it works. All right, uh, next question. What is your full name? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. I'll give you an example, you give me a full sentence. All right, so here's an example here. If you have multiple names, always say the name that you have in your passport. Okay, so repeat questions and answers. Here we go. What is your full name? My given names are Ahmed, Mohammed, and my family name is Al-Zahrani. Please just call me by my nickname, Mo. All right, Mo. Okay, so just like that. Okay, uh, Raquea says, my full name is Raquea Katoon. Please call me by my given name, Raquea. Very nice, Raquea. Fluent to the point. Make sure it's accurate. Don't make B verb mistakes. Make sure you have is. Okay. My full name is Raquea Katoon. And pay attention to capitalization on proper nouns, Raquea. Okay. So capital R, capital K. All right. Okay. Good, okay, so these are just some warm-up questions, so we'll move through these nice and smoothly here, and then we'll get into uh, our part one topic questions. Let's jump to the next one. Again, repeat after me. Do you work or study? Do you work or study, right? Just repeat, feel, feel comfortable. Um, repeat the questions and the answers again loudly with confidence, right? Do you work or uh, study, okay? All right, so uh, here, um, I am both employed at an animal uh, shelter as an assistant to the vet, and I go uh, to learn um, at my local college. I am uh, doing classes uh, for pre-med. Okay, all right, so here we go. Do you work or study? I am both employed at an animal shelter as an assistant to the vet, and I go to learn at my local college. I'm doing classes for uh, my pre-med. Okay. Uh, pre-medical. Pre-med means pre-medical studies, okay? All right, um, now notice how here I'm using the both and, 
Okay, so I'm explaining and emphasizing that I'm doing this and this. I'm doing both this and this. Those are called correlative conjunctions. Students, make sure to learn your conjunctions. Okay, um, you can learn uh, your uh, coordinating uh, correlative uh, subordinating conjunctions. Okay, uh, make sure to learn those. All right. Uh, for those of you that are not quite sure what that is, um, you can always go to the website, go to your My Student account. In your My Student account, go to your uh, full online academic course. At the bottom there, it's going to be beside me here, you're going to see the bonus writing and grammar. Click on that. And then in the bonus writing and grammar, uh, you are going to welcome uh, to be able AE Helps to learn free about, online writing course. Um, the uh, conjunctions here. Okay. So uh, here you go. Um, okay, so it's showing you the conjunctions and you can learn about them there. Um, these are the coordinating conjunctions and these are the correlative conjunctions. Correlative conjunctions like uh, not only but also, let me see if I can, uh, they're over here, they're down here. Um, anyway, um, learn it on the website there, okay? So check that out, okay? Know your conjunctions. Those are the linking words, the joining words, okay? All right, and again, you can get the premium version of the course by clicking that big red button right there, okay? All right, conjunctions are important because they make your language sound not only uh, fluent, but also more professional. So being able to use, for example, the correlative conjunctions, um, they're more fluent. Now that's, again, a lesson that I often teach, um, these correlative conjunctions, but when it comes to the IELTS speaking, I don't often hear people using those correlative conjunctions. So learn them, both and, not only, uh, but also, and use them, okay? Either or, neither, nor, whether, uh, or, okay? So learn to use those, all right? Okay, um, let's see. Janine says for this question, so we're still looking at this question of uh, do you work or study? Okay, Janine says, currently I am one of the domestic workers in Mubarak Kabir to my boss and their children. Uh, sending and ditching them to their respective schools. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're saying, Janine. Um, okay. Uh, do you, are you, Janine, are you like a nanny? Is that what you're saying? So you take care of another person's children while they're doing business? Is, I think that's what you're trying to tell me. So currently I'm one of the domestic workers in Mubarak Kabir to my boss and their children, sending and ditching them. Okay, so I think what you're, you're trying to say, Janine, is I am currently uh, working as a nanny, uh, taking care of uh, two children, um, you don't ditch them at school. <laughs> um, I have to smile when you when you say that. Uh, when you ditch somebody, it basically means you like um, get rid of them. So if you ditch your children, that means you're trying to get rid of them. Like you're trying to escape from them. Okay. So careful with that uh, with that expression, Janine. So ditching a person uh, means that you are escaping from them. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, my date was really um, gross. Uh, he kept um, spitting 
in his soup so I ditched him at the restaurant okay so that would be the correct use of ditching uh, now maybe you're ditching your boss's kids at school but just be careful how you say that okay so I'm currently working as a nanny taking care of two children I uh, drop them off at school and uh, make their lunch okay uh, five times a week right so that would be a, a bit better sentence okay yeah suckering it means to get rid of the person yeah so ditch means to get rid of a person or escape from a person um, to get rid of or escape um, yeah so the the actual meaning of a ditch by the way so is when you have a road let me just make that clear for everybody so a ditch is a physical structure so here you have a road okay and on the side of the road you have these kind of gutters okay that are for the water all right that humans have put there so that the water can kind of go off the road um, this depression in the ground is called a ditch okay so um, if you push a person into the ditch ah, they're falling into the ditch then you're ditching the person you just remember it that way so you push the person they fall into the ditch on the side of the road and then you run away you've successfully ditched that person okay so that's where it comes from okay does that make sense so you ditch a person by pushing them into the ditch okay all right so that's how you ditch a person okay that's where the the concept of ditching a person I think it actually comes from people pushing people off the cart like a wagon a long time ago back in the day the horse or the cart and pushing them into a ditch okay so that's where that expression comes from it's not a very nice expression <laughs> okay. all right everybody um, so next question here what did you do at the weekend all right give me a nice full sentence answer for this one what did you do at the weekend I'll give you an answer and then uh, you can uh, see how yours matches up. So on uh, Saturday, um, I uh, visited one of my friends and we caught up over a cup of tea. And on uh, Sunday, I watched a couple of uh, flicks to relax and get ready for the work week okay there's my answer uh, repeat after me what did you do at the weekend on Saturday I visited one of my friends and we caught up over a cup of tea and on Sunday I watched a couple of flicks to relax and get ready for the work week now, uh, notice here, students, that I'm using quantification. That's right. Saturday and Sunday quantify the weekend. Okay, so I'm basically telling the examiner that Saturday and Sunday are my weekend days. And I pay attention to the tense. So it's did. What did you do at the weekend? It's using British English at the weekend. I'm using American English, or in this case, West Coast Canadian English. Okay, so I'm using on Saturday, all right? And um, caught up to catch up means to discuss what happened in our lives. Uh, this is an idiom. Okay, you don't need fancy idioms. Like you don't need to say, oh, on the weekend I was over the moon because my best friend visited me from out of town. You don't need to use these cliche idioms like over the moon, okay? They're overused. You can use simple phrasal verbs for idiomatic language like to catch up, okay? 
um, over a cup of tea. All right, and then on Sunday, Okay, now don't say at Sunday, say on Sunday, so be consistent. You can't mix British and American. It doesn't matter if you use British, it doesn't matter if you use American, but don't mix it in the same sentence. That's weird, okay? So on Sunday, I watched a couple of flicks to relax and get ready for the work week. Now notice how flicks, it's a kind of a colloquial, informal term for movies. It's totally okay to use vocabulary like that in your speaking. In fact, it will help your vocabulary score. Okay, all right, so keep that in mind. Okay, let's see what some of you have for your answers. Okay, um, Domenico, nice to see you answering the questions. I saw that you answered the past couple of questions as well. It's great to see. Uh, Domenico, one of our longtime channel members studying and developing well okay so Domenico says well generally on Saturdays I tend to catch up with my group of uh, bosom buddies at a seaside cafe and have a giggle over coffee while on Sundays I love to unwind and relax by watching football um, Domenico for this you would probably get a low score why students why would Domenico not get a very good score for this answer Domenico what do you think so, well, generally on Saturdays, I tend to catch up with my group of Bosom buddies at a seaside cafe and have a giggle over coffee, while on Sundays I love to unwind and relax by watching football. So what do you think? Hi, Chen. One of our other moderators just jumped in. Good to see you, Chen. Uh, Derek says he used complicated vocabulary. No, not really. Yeah, Shaifur, you're right. So Shaifur says the question is asking about the past weekend, not generally about weekends. So Domenico, you really have to pay attention to the question. Do What did you do at the weekend? Means last weekend, right? So see how I gave a very specific uh, answer in my case? I talked about last Saturday, last Sunday. You're talking about Saturdays uh, and you're talking about Sundays. Uh. This is asking about the last weekend so this is off topic uh, you have to make sure everyone that you are very very careful and pay careful attention to the exact nature of the question okay all right so pay attention uh, not just to what you want to say but what you need to say that's a very important tip all right okay and then the examiner will say let's talk about playing games okay no need to apologize, Domenico. Just learn and move on. Um, students, when you're learning a language, uh, when you're learning any um, skill or activity, don't apologize. Just say, got it. Move on. No need to say sorry. Okay? All right. So, um, let's go. Let's talk about playing and games. How often do you play a game? Please don't say, I don't play games, okay? <laughs> Every human plays games. Uh, even if you think you don't, pay more attention to what you're doing because I guarantee that you play some games, maybe some very simple games, but you play games, whether it's with another person or whether it's on your phone or whether it's a type of uh, verbal game with your colleagues. Uh, or even just trying to throw paper into the garbage can at the office, I guarantee that you play games. It's in our nature. It's part of our fundamental part of our human nature. So uh, avoid negatives, students. That's a very important tip, okay? Avoid negatives and conversation stoppers in the IELTS. So, for example, don't say something like, I don't play games, I don't have time. I guarantee that if you think about it, you play games. Even the most prudent and uh, hardworking individuals play games of some sorts. Okay? All right? So, always practice answering in the positives. Okay? All right. So I would say for myself, I frequently uh, play games, whether alone, 
uh, playing a game like uh, Hearthstone on my phone or um, playing a board game with my uh, children, I spend at least uh, two hours each day uh, gaming. Okay. All right. So uh, here we go. I frequently play games. Repeat after me. I frequently play games, whether alone, playing a game like Hearthstone on my phone, or playing a board game with my children. I spend at least two hours each day gaming. Okay. All right. So dark comment, I don't play a lot of computer games anymore. I just play Hearthstone on my phone in chess time. Chess and Hearthstone strategy games. That's it. Okay. All right. Um, here we go. So Ubadulayev says, oh, that's a good question. I always play games when I am free and when I want to kill my time after having a difficult and stressful day. It really helps me deny negative uh, thoughts. All right. Um, it's not bad. We could improve on this answer a little bit, Ubadulayev. Uh, what could we improve, students? So if we look at Ubadulayev's uh, answer here, I would probably give it like a band six to seven. Okay. And we could improve it. How could we improve it? What do you think? What will be my recommendations? Okay, so right now, as this is Ubadulayev, this would be about a band six, okay, to seven. But we can make it a band nine, all right? Uh, Rakwea says example, yeah, of course, Rakwea, like what kind of games, like what games? Okay, so the examiner's thinking like what games? Okay. All right, so that would be one way for sure. What else could I do to improve this answer? Okay, so how else can I can I improve this? Okay, there's a little bit more. Uh, no, kill my time is okay, hard job, that works. There's something else I would probably remove though. No, nope, kill is okay, I want to kill my time. We say that, I kill time while I'm waiting at the dentist office playing video games, yeah. Nope, let's see, some other suggestions. Nope. Does anything sound awkward in this uh, response? So, watch, I'll repeat this. How often do you play a game? Oh, that is a good question. I always play games when I am free and when I want to kill my time after having a difficult and stressful day. It really helps me to deny negative thoughts. Yeah, exactly, Oleski. Oh, that's a good question. It's strange in this case, right? Like, oh, it's a good question that I ask you how often you play games. It's kind of weird. It's not really a good question. It's not like I ask you how do we uh, save nature or how do we decrease pollution. Oh, that's a good question, right? So that would be a good question, right? Or how do you make a million dollars? Oh, that's a good question, right? Um, how often do you play games? Oh, that's a good question. It's kind of like, really? Why? <laughs> I'm just asking you how often you play games, right? So it's okay to use leading expressions, students, but you have to use them naturally. You can't use leading expressions in awkward ways. Like you can't say, that's an amazing question. The examiner will know that you're preloading that English and it's strange and you don't get marks. In fact, you lose marks if you're doing that because it's considered not natural language, okay? So here I would start with, I always play games when I'm free and when I want to kill my time after having a difficult and stressful day. Here I would quantify it, okay? Uh, probably about uh, half an hour uh, to an hour daily, okay? All right, so quantify, right? So what does always mean? Does that mean like five hours a day? Does that mean two hours a day? Does that mean four times a week? 
So what what is that in your world, right? It's probably not the same as my world. So explain it, right? Um, and this sentence, it really helps me deny negative thoughts. Um, that's, a, that's a little bit strange, okay? Like, um, what kind of negative thoughts are you thinking about there, Ubadulayev? That's a little bit awkward okay it would kind of scare me if i were your examiner i'd be like Rrr. i'd push my chair back a little bit right like um what negative thoughts okay um so that's a bit awkward careful with that okay um so something like um it really helps me decompress right but you've already said a stressful day it really helps me to recharge uh, for my upcoming tasks Um, I played uh, half an hour of chess online to um, get focused before this exam, okay? So that would be a band nine, all right? Okay, so here's your answer, Badulayev. I always play games when I'm free and when I want to kill my time after having a difficult and stressful day probably about half an hour to an hour daily it helps me to recharge for upcoming responsibilities I played half an hour of chess online to get focused for this test okay all right so pay attention um, here we go um, let's um, let's jump a few let's do it a little bit differently today so let's jump to the last two questions here and then we'll practice those other questions as well so here's a good one. Uh, the questions get more and more challenging the further you go uh, in your speaking test, even within each part. So part the first question of part one will be easier. The last couple questions of part one will be more challenging, okay? It's the same is true for part two, the cue card, and the same is true for part three. So the last few questions are usually the more challenging questions that require more vocabulary, grammar, fluency, thinking as well. All right. Okay, um, let's do this. So uh, here's a, a later question in part one. How have playing games changed over the last three decades? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay. I'm going to do the same and then we'll compare. Again, pay attention to detail, hint, hint, grammar, reflect the question, explanations and examples. Okay, so over the past 30 years, playing games have become quite uh, different. Back in the 90s. Uh, most uh, people played uh, games that required a physical activity uh, like uh, Twister where people have to uh, put their limbs on colorful circles but Nowadays, a lot of individuals play um, digital thinking games like uh, strategy games, such as uh, Hearthstone, which I play, and it is a, a strategy card game. Okay, so there's my answer. Now, of course, giving an answer like this, you have to be nice and fluent. Um, if you're speaking a little bit slower, then try to keep your answer a little bit shorter, even more concise, okay? And so here we go, repeat after me. Um, how have playing games changed over the last three decades? Over the past 30 years, playing games have become quite different. Uh, back in the 90s, most people played games that required physical activity like Twister, where people have to put their limbs on colorful circles. But nowadays, a lot of individuals play 
thinking games online, like strategy games such as Hearthstone, which I play. It's a card game. Okay. All right, Koa has this answer for us. Koa says, uh, nowadays, the video games are increasing drastically. That makes people concentrate on playing them more than playing outdoor games with friends for three decades. Okay. So this answer would be about a band four to a band five. Okay, so we have to improve this one quite a bit, Koa. Um, tell, let's, let's discuss it. So why? So um, what do you think? Why is the examiner giving Koa a band four to five for the contents of this answer? Nowadays, the video games are increasing drastically. That makes people concentrate on playing them more than playing outdoor games with friends for three decades. Okay. What do you think? What's going on with this answer? Why is Koa only getting a band four or five here? Ahmed says it's not logical. Yeah, Ahmed, what you're trying to say is it's incoherent. The grammatical mistakes uh, make this uh, incoherent, which means difficult to understand. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, what else? Okay. Uh, Kui, uh, I think, Kui Fuang, I think he, he do, Koa does answer this. Abo says it's nonsense. It's hard to make sense of it. Okay. Alexi says there's a lack of description and examples. Okay. Um, Abos, uh, students, the examiner doesn't think, oh, it's nonsense. Okay. They're, uh, they're more analytical than that. Okay. Um, they, Think about the grammatical mistakes. Um, what's one of the grammar mistakes here? Okay. Band four means that I can understand what Koa is saying. Like, believe it or not, I can understand that Koa is saying that these days people play a lot more video games than people 30 years ago. They played games outdoors more, so uh, physical activities more. Okay. So I do understand the answer. I do understand what Koa is saying. It's just very kind of mixed up and inaccurate in many ways. Um, Raquea says it doesn't use present perfect. Exactly, Raquea. So this question uses play, uh, present perfect. How have playing games changed? Okay, that's present perfect. You have to show present perfect. Like here, have become. Okay. So there's no present perfect here, Koa. Okay. So nowadays, you could say Koa like this. Nowadays, video, uh, video games have become very popular. But um, 30 years ago or a generation ago, right? Because that's also about 30 years. But a generation ago, uh, people played uh, way more games outdoors. I hear my parents... Uh, talking about it all the time, saying kids uh, these days play way too uh, much computer games. They need to play uh, soccer or cricket like we used to. Okay? So this would be a band nine. Okay, uh, repeat after me. Nowadays, video games have become very popular, but a generation ago, people played way more games outdoors. I hear my parents talking about it all the time, saying kids these days play way too much computer games. They need to play soccer or cricket like we used to. Okay, so this is a band nine. What kind of grammar uh, is this using obviously it's using present perfect but it's also using another type of nice complex language what is this example using what is this called this uh, I hear them saying kids these days play way too much computer games they need to play soccer or cricket like we used to so what kind of language is that and we haven't talked about this much in our speaking classes but I would love to hear some of you try this in our volunteer work Okay, 
Alexi, that's right, it's reported speech. So um, using reported speech. This is a good tip here for everybody. Using reported speech once or twice. Whether it's direct or indirect reported speech, it doesn't matter, just use reported speech. So using reported speech, direct or indirect, is a good way to boost your score in IELTS uh, speaking for grammatical range and natural language. Okay, because we do that, right? In uh, professional communication and everyday communication, we quote, right? So we'll talk about what our parents used to say, uh, we'll talk about what the professor has said. So use reported speech, direct or indirect. And you're right, Live Shots, this is direct speech. Okay, all right. Good, good. Um, students, uh, let's use the uh, next half an hour or so to actually speak with each other. So let's do a bit of volunteering for speaking, okay? This is where we get to have some fun. You get to actually answer these questions, listen to your peers, practice with them, learn some strategies, learn how the IELTS marking works. Um, so to do this, please go to aehelp.com, our website, um, and then uh, log into your My Student account, click on Student Partner Speaking, enable your microphone, test your system, especially if you're new to this, okay? Um, and uh, Sarah has put the instructions in the chat. Uh, Chen has put the instructions in the chat for you as well. So follow those instructions. Let me show you how to do this. So we go to aehelp.com. Again, these are the websites that power these live lessons. Tomorrow we will use these websites for the reading and for the listening materials. So sign up for the premium versions by clicking on the uh, big uh, red button that's just right above my head there. It's a one-time payment, it's lifetime access. Uh, it will help you prepare for the IELTS for sure. And then uh, once you have a, an account, you can go to your My Student account. In your My Student account, click on Student Partner Speaking. It's this right here, okay? Um, you'll get all these materials with the premium version. You get the full online course, all of our lesson videos in HD and lots, lots more. Now the student partner speaking, it's free for everybody. So click on I accept start speaking. That means that you are responsible for your words, okay? And you will be in the chat interface. And in the chat interface, you're going to see a lot of your fellow students. Nice to see some of our new premium students in here as well. Frost, I see you in here, that's great. Now you'll see me in here as master, okay? So you'll see my handle, I can't see myself, but you'll see me as master, okay? And then send me a message, say I would like to volunteer, okay? All right, once I see that, then I can try to connect with you. So uh, let's connect uh, with, um, with Thu. Thu, are you ready? Okay, I'm always going to send you a quick message to make sure uh, that you're ready. Yes, and new volunteers are absolutely welcome. I encourage everybody to try this out, okay? Hello. Hi Thu, how are you? I'm fine. Good. Mm -hmm. Thu, How where about you? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Where are you right now, Thu? I come from Berkeley. Uh, John, uh, I come from Berkeley, John Austin, France, Vietnam. In Vietnam, yes, I remember. You said you're in Vietnam. Okay, and why are you doing IELTS? Yes. I have been dreaming of becoming a member of a uh, top type of university in my country, so just in wise I take this IELTS exam. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, so I know in Vietnam many, many universities need an IELTS exam, and that's how it is in many parts of the world. Uh, universities need people to speak English so that they can um, do their jobs globally. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Thu, I will ask you a few part one questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's do this. So welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. For part one, I will ask you some questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. May I see your identification? Yes, sure. Yes, in my name is in the identity card that is beautiful. This is the symbol we have a look. What is your full name? My full name is Nguyen Thị Thuy Trang, but please call me too. What should I call you? And you should call me too. Okay. Um, I will ask you a couple questions to get to know you better. Uh, do you work or study? No, I am not. Currently, I am still in Leto uh, High School, and I am class, uh, and I am studying in class eleven I three. Is what is it also a top uh, ranking class in my school? What did you do at the weekend? Well, on Saturday and Sunday, I usually oversleep or. I just uh, uh, read online or read a book because it will put in my behavior and it kept from first and first of daily life of study life. I'm sorry. Okay, Thu, good. I'll stop there for a second um, and could just give you a feedback on some of those introductory questions. That was really good. First of all. Good focus on fluency. So, you know, you're really um, pushing yourself to give nice full sentence answers and I think that's awesome, okay? So your fluency score would be nice and high. Your fluency score would be like seven, eight, that's great. Um, your coherence score is a little bit lower um, just because some of the pronunciation is a bit awkward. Plus, I'll be honest with you, Thu, there's a bit of static. So it's it's a little bit hard for me to hear you. In the real exam, it'll be nice and quiet. There's no uh, internet across the world. So they'll hear you a little bit better. So that's the good news. Um, but be careful with uh, your word choice, especially at the end of your sentences. Okay, so practice lots, you're doing the correct steps. Um, let me give you a little bit uh, more specific feedback, okay? So uh, the first couple questions that was good when I asked you for your uh, identification and your name. And then I said, do you work or study? And you said, no, I am not. It's kind of strange. It's like, no, I am not what, right? Um, so what I think you meant to say is, I am not working right now, or I'm not working yet. Uh, currently, I'm a student in high school. Okay, so I careful. I, Go ahead. Thu. Actually, I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I am. I, I don't say. I'm not. Maybe use mistake. Or I might not have heard you. That's right. And that was the issue. Is at a couple of points, I didn't hear you clearly. It's because we don't have the best connection, but it's also because you need to enunciate more. So when you're practicing your speaking at home, really focus on copying the style of English speakers. So, you know, say like, I'm not working right now. I'm still just a student. Can you try to do that? So just copy the way I say it. I'm not working yet. I'm still just a student. I'm not working yet. I'm still a student in high school. Okay, I want you to say it twice as loud with twice as much confidence, Thu. Mm -hmm. Try it one more time. I am not working yet. I am still a student. Huh? I'm still a stu student. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Louder, more confidence. Get angry. Pinch yourself. Pinch and then go. Um, <laughs> so, no, maybe don't start pinching yourself, students. But yeah, it, it's almost like you know you want to get a little bit almost angry, right? Or or too excited. So say it like, I'm not working yet. I'm still just a student. One more time, Thu. 
I'm not working now. Currently, I am a student. Okay, better, better. I'm starting to hear confidence in your voice. Okay, much better. So, Thu, that's what I want you to practice, okay? So, lots of emphasis, lots of intonation. So, as if you're a little bit on the angrier side that day, okay? Yes. All right. Thu, keep it up. S seriously, you're doing great, okay? Yes. All right. Thanks for being my first volunteer. Bye, Thu. Hi. All right, let's give Thu a thumbs up. That was really good. Um, yeah, students, confidence goes a long way. It's a big part of your score for sure. So, um, of course, as many of you realize, yeah, okay, we have the internet and it's a bit staticky, it's a bit fuzzy. But at the end of the day, um, you have to overcome that, okay? So you have to be nice and loud. Uh, let's try a Akriti. Akriti, are you ready? Let's see if Akriti is there for us today. Akriti is there, yes, cool. Hi, Akriti. Hi. Hello, how are you? I am doing fine, thank you. How are you, Akriti? I'm also doing great. Thanks for asking. That's awesome. Akriti, um, where are you right now and why are you taking IELTS? Uh, I'm doing IELTS for my uh, tutorial education. Mm -hmm. And where are you? Uh, I'm here in Kathmandu, Nepal. Kathmandu, Nepal. And as I always say, yeah. it's one of my favorite city names in the world. I think you've got the coolest name for a city. It's Kathmandu. Um, it's just got such a nice sound to it. Um, all right. Akriti, uh, the correct pronunciation is tertiary. Tertiary education. Tertiary. Oh. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. So if you can't pronounce it, then use a different word, say higher level education or graduate studies or uh, university, right? But let's try it one more time. Tertiary. 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 Ch -ch -ch tertiary. Tertiary education. Yes. So everybody, it's a good word that Akriti is trying to use here. It's definitely very academic um, but you have to make sure you can pronounce it so you've got three levels of education you've got your primary which is basically like your grades one to eight nine depending on your school system you've got your secondary which is your high school and then you've got your tertiary which is your um, undergraduate graduate studies in college and university so that's your tertiary tertiary means basically the third level of education so primary is first secondary is second obviously number two and tertiary is third so tertiary but it's a tricky pronunciation there okay all right um, Akriti let's try a few questions are you ready Yes, I'm ready. Awesome. Here we go. Let's talk about playing games. How often do you play a game? Uh, most of the time I play game uh, at on the weekend, like badminton. Okay. When do you like playing games? Uh, sorry. When Can do you, you like repeat again? Yeah. When do you like to play games? I love to play games on the weekend, uh, like outdoor games such as badminton and uh, basketball. And la uh, last and last Sunday I played uh, badminton with my sisters. Which type of games are your favorite? Uh, as I said before, uh, I've used, I like to play badminton, so uh, outdoor games are my favorite. Where is a good place to buy games?
where is a good place to buy games? Akriti, are you there still? Yeah. It sounds like you're still there. Akriti, don't go, don't go. Um, I'm not sure what's happening on Akriti's and it sounded like we we're still connected. Um, Akriti, if you can hear me, let me know. In the meantime, I will uh, give you some feedback, okay? So um, your band score level at this point would be about a band five-ish, maybe a band 5.5. You have really good pronunciation. I can understand every word that you're saying, okay? Except for that one word tertiary, your pronunciation is quite nice, okay? So it's like a solid seven to eight, no problem, all right? Your grammar accuracy, Akriti, is quite good as well. Okay, so your grammar is quite accurate, but it's very simple. You need to show more grammar. So your grammatical range and your coherence, what you're saying, needs to improve. Okay, um, so I asked you how often uh, do you play games, Akriti, and you said most of the time I play game on the weekend like badminton. Um, most of the time I play games on the weekend, so you forgot a plural there like badminton and then here students uh what could akriti have done to keep talking and to get a better score anybody akriti i'm gonna hang up the line on your end there and refresh the page while we're discussing this okay i'm not sure what happened to akriti there okay so akriti thumbs up for sure that was great effort i'm not sure if you got kind of cut off there the internet bugged out but it's fine um, so Akriti said most of the time I play games on the weekend like badminton. Uh, Fuang says some explanation and example. Yeah, that's okay, Fuang. There's some other concept that should uh, come to mind here. Same thing, Philo. Another concept. Chayani, exactly. Quantification, right? So the how often, you should always just quantify. So most of the time I play games on the weekends like badminton, I usually... Uh, play badminton for a couple of hours uh, on uh, Saturdays and Sundays to get uh, some exercise. Okay, I played uh, for um, two hours yesterday, if your exam is on a Monday, right? So that would be a good way to answer. So your fluency, think about explanations, think about examples, think about quantification, okay? And then um, here, the question is, which type of games are your uh, favorite, right? And Akriti says, as I said before, I like to play badminton. Other games are my favorite. Um, okay. So instead of other games are my favorite, let's help out Akriti here, okay? Um, what type of game is badminton? Students, let's see some vocabulary here and let's help out Akriti. So when she's talking about badminton in the future, badminton of course is the game where you have what's called a shuttlecock or a birdie and you hit it across a net, right? So you have a net and you've got uh, a couple of players on each side with their badminton rackets. Uh, that's the badminton racket. There's a Kriti. We'll give a Kriti some nice long hair. It's flying in the wind. She's very good at playing badminton. Um, so there's a Kriti's badminton racket, and there is the uh, shuttlecock that's flying. Ooh, zing! Okay, um, across the net. All right. There's the net. Um, so uh, what kind of game is that? Dewey says it's an interactive game. Absolutely, it's interactive. So uh, there are lots of ways. So um, as I like to play badminton, interactive games with multiple players. Yeah, badminton definitely needs at least two players. It's pretty boring to play by yourself and difficult. Um, it's an outdoor game as well.
to get fresh air. What else? What, what other kind of game is badminton? So a game can be described in many ways, and a game like badminton can be described in many ways. Yeah, very good. I can't read the weird name there. I think it's Abhivisnu, but um, Abhivisnu, competitive games, uh, competitive games. Yeah, where somebody wins. And in badminton, it's competitive. I mean, we try to be better than the other person, right? We want that birdie to land on their side. Okay. Um, and it's also uh, similar to tennis. That's right, Nipa. What do we call those? Uh, tennis. Uh, table tennis or, or ping pong. Um, badminton. Racquetball or squash. Um, what do we call these games? That's right, Philo. They're called racket games. Okay. Called racket games. Not net games. They're called racket games, Dylan. Okay. So, as I said before, I like to play badminton, interacting games, multiple players, outdoor games to get fresh air, competitive games, and mostly uh, racket games. I'm also getting into uh, tennis these days. They're called racket games, okay? All right, good. So um, vocabulary does matter. Always give explanations, give details. Don't just repeat what you've already said, okay? So here, try this after me, and this is for a bit of vocabulary practice. Which types of games are your favorite? As I said before, I like to play badminton, so interactive games with more than one player. I like to be outdoors to get some fresh air. I like to compete, and most of the time I like to play racket games. They are my favorite. I'm trying to get into tennis these days as well. Okay, volleyball also uses a net, but that's a team sport, right? Then you're getting into what's called team sports, okay? All right, um, Alvin, you cannot replace air with oxygen. <laughs> it's strange, okay? So you can't say, I like to play outdoor games to get fresh oxygen. No, oxygen does not work, okay? Oxygen is just a part of the air that we breathe. It's not, so air is more than just oxygen, although, Oxygen obviously is important, but we don't say I like to get oxygen, okay? All right, it, not in English, anyway. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's try a little bit more here. Let's see if we can take uh, one more volunteer here. Um, let's do this. So, uh, Raquea, we had a little bit of difficulty connecting, so let's see if we can connect today. We had some trouble connecting last time. Raquea is a very studious person let's give her a shot are you ready okay all right make sure you have a good connection everybody here we go Raquea, if you're there let me know here we go hello Raquea. i still can't hear you but as you see, I can connect with some other people, so I think there's some issue on your end, and I'm not sure what it is or what's changed, um, but you have to troubleshoot it. So you gotta check if you might need a VPN or might have to switch your connection type, okay, Rakwea? I cannot, I can definitely not hear you, okay? Let me see if uh, I can connect with Dewey. Um, Dewey, also a very studious uh, learner. Um, Dewey, are you ready? Hopefully we can connect with Dewey because he is over in France. He, I think he has a pretty good internet connection. Hi, Brian. Hi, Dewey. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. Good. Good, good. Um, How about doing, you? I'm doing pretty good, thanks. Yeah, I, I, I was a bit tired waking up, but my energy level is getting better. So, yeah, good. That's, that's my everyday story. <laughs> slow, slow start in the morning. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, Dewey, uh, let's jump into some of these uh, part one questions. Are you ready? 
Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So um, here we go. Uh, which type of games are your favorite? Um, interactive and team games are definitely my favorite, namely football and poker. With football, I love the physical and competitive aspect of it. While with poker, I mainly love it because I'm um, pretty good at it, so I can earn some pocket money from time to time. How have playing games changed over the last three decades? Uh, even um, the way people play games has definitely changed a lot in the last uh, 30 years. I mean, in the 1990s, uh, most games required people to interact with each other face to face. Why these days with the development of technology, particularly with the emergence of smartphones, there are not only more games available uh, at our fingertips, but these sorts of entertainment also allow people to interact and have fun with each other from all around the world. If you could make a game, what would it be? Wow, that's a good question. I have never thought about it. Um, well, if given the chance to make a game, I would like to make a game where people can uh, uh, learn English vocabulary, and each time they got one question right, they will earn uh, 10 per 10p. This way, people can uh, this can motivate people to learn English and help people to improve their English. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with yeah. part two. Dewey, that was great today. That was really good. You get two huge thumbs up. Um, that would be a band nine. That's definitely wow. how, that's definitely how you do a band nine. Okay, that's yeah, about that's as great. that's about as good as it gets. Um, I can only really just highlight what you did well um, because there's just basically no mistakes. I mean, is it flawless English? No. Um, is there some repetition? Yes. You repeated a couple of terms in the last answer here. However, it's still a band nine because it's expert level communication. So it's clear, it's concise, you answer the questions, you use a good range of vocabulary, grammar, it's accurate, easy to understand. And as your audience, as your listener, I'm satisfied. So I don't have questions left, I don't feel confused, and I have uh, this feeling of completion, okay? All right. Yeah, thank you very much for your kind work. Yeah, no, it's 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 all you. Um, you did it. So let me show you what Dewey did. Let me just emphasize some of the key uh, elements here that are um, really good. Okay. So first of all, I asked which types of games are your favorite, and immediately you said interactive and team games are definitely my favorite very clear and direct answer, right? Which type of games are your favorite? Interactive and team games. And then right away you give me two very clear examples. Uh, football and poker, right? Uh, one is a card game, the other is a, as a sports game, both games. And then you give very clear explanations of why that is, Dewey. And uh, you even said that you're, you like poker because you're good at it and you make some pocket money. And I was like, okay, remind me not to well, play, not to play poker with, uh, <laughs> with Dewey. Uh, do you play? That's a lie, though. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw you play, I, and it's visual. Like I don't know about everybody else, but I literally saw Dewey playing Texas Hold'em and raking in the pot, <laughs> taking everybody's <laughs> money, <laughs> and full house, and it's mine. Um, so very visual. That's a good sign that you're in the high band scores when your listener is seeing what you're saying, not just hearing it, but seeing it. I don't know about you, but I literally saw Dewey playing poker, even though he's in Paris, in France, on the other side of the world. Um, okay, and then um, I asked you this uh, question, how have playing games changed? Notice how Dewey started slow. He used some natural fillers. He said, um, um, the way people play games and you were dragging it. You were, you were taking your time starting. It was totally fine. It was natural and the answer was a great answer. The way people play games have definitely changed a lot in 30 years. In the 1990s, games required people to interact with each other face to face. Now people can play games with each other across the globe. So Dewey took some time to think about it and then realized that, oh yeah, people are playing games all around the world with each other now. It wasn't quite like that in the 90s and that was very 
very clever. You, you realize technology and globalization are a huge impact on the way people game today. So that was yeah. really good. That was really good. Did you visualize that, Dewey? Like, did you see people right. playing like a video game with their friend on the other side of the world? Or how did you come up with that? I mean, I just um, remembered your advice uh, from our last uh, sessions. You said that whenever with a question from asking about how something had changed, it's a good idea to relate to the development of technology. So I kind of applied this uh, strategy into this uh, question and uh, I am happy that it worked out well. Absolutely. And, and you did really well. And beyond just thinking about technology, right? So of course, our biggest growth as humanity has been related to technology in the last 30 years. Um, you took it one step further, and this is what I recommend everybody to do, is to think about how has technology changed our lives? So what has it actually done for us, right? And when we think about games, one effect technology has had uh, is to connect us internationally, right? So you made that relationship between technology and globalization, which was really, really good. Um, okay, so again, a very good answer there. And then the last question I asked you was if you could make a game, what would it be? And you started with, that's a good question. I've never really thought about it. This is a great place to use that leading expression because it is, right? I mean, we don't usually go around and people don't usually ask us like, hey, Dewey, uh, how about that new game? What do you think? What are you going to make? What are you going to do? Do you, do you get that question often, Dewey, in your workplace or from your friends? Like, what kind of game are you going to make today, Dewey? Do, do you get that question? <laughs> well, if anyone in my workplace asks me that question, I will maybe never talk to him. <laughs> I don't much. know if I do that, but <laughs> yeah, it'd be kind of unexpected <laughs> for sure, right? Like, what? Excuse me? Um, so, so this is where you can use these kinds of leading expressions. And then you use the question. You said, if given the chance to make a game. So you stretched it even more. And then you realized, okay, context, right? I'm learning English. I'm doing the IELTS. Why not talk about making an English vocabulary game where people get points and learn vocabulary and have fun and that was really clever so it was quick clever thinking with good english that leads to those band nine scores do thank you so much for uh showing what that level is so what it takes to to get to that level thank you i appreciate it thank you very much uh, adrian for your feedback and your kind words okay have a nice one you too do enjoy the rest of the day bye for now bye bye all right, so that was Dewey. Let's, yeah, let's give him a thumbs up. That's how it's done. I couldn't have done it better myself. Um, and again, students, notice it doesn't have to be perfect English. It doesn't have to be fast English. Uh, it doesn't have to be hyper advanced vocabulary. It just has to be clear, concise, complete. Okay. Uh, students, uh, again, we're using. Um, the website aehelp.com for this. The student chat interface is free. I definitely recommend joining our premium IELTS course by clicking that big red button up there at aehelp.com. Okay, I'll put it into the chat. Um, it's worth it. We're going to be using the website tomorrow with the listening and reading. So if you want to start using the listening materials, the reading materials today to get ready, Join the premium version. It doesn't cost a lot. Um, and we're always adding materials, always adding new features. We're an IDP affiliate, British Council partner, IELTS Test Registration Center, General IELTS, GIELTSHelp.com. Um, thank you so much, uh, by the way, uh, Sarah and Chen for moderating today. I saw there was a bit of work there with uh, people going off topic and uh, changing to other languages so I appreciate the effort that two of you are putting in everybody let's give Chen and Sarah a thumbs up okay let's thank them for their hard work that's fantastic um, without them these classes would be more challenging no doubt okay um, tomorrow uh, reading and listening everybody so uh, again aehelp.com for academic IELTS uh, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS Thu Akiri Dewey, thank you for volunteering with me today. Uh, everybody, keep practicing. Chin up. You're all beautiful people. You're all smart people. Your brain is a learning machine. You can master two, three, four languages in a lifetime, no problem. Keep that in mind. And I hope that you'll come back and be with me in tomorrow's lesson. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria, Canada for now. 
Bye, everybody.